everyone and welcome to this Video Sans Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and in this video uh, we are back with the iBook G3. And in this video I would like to upgrade this machine so that it can actually connect wirelessly to my home network. Now on an Apple machine, the way that you need to do that is to install an airport card. Now, don't let the name confuse you. An airport card is basically just a regular wireless card. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just that Apple calls it an airport card. At least in, you know, Mac OS X um, <clears throat> and certainly in the earlier versions. Anyway, to do that, we'll actually need to install the card under the keyboard. And it's actually quite simple to do. Um, although I haven't actually ever installed an airport card in a Mac. I am told it's quite easy to do. So let's do it now. First step, I actually do need to shut down the Mac. So um, I'm going to go to... Um, sorry, I'm a, bit, a wee bit shaky at the moment. Going to go to Apple and then shut down and then click shut down. Excellent. That's the machine switched off. Now I'm going to unplug it from the mains and I'm also going to remove the battery. Which really, I, sh I should have a coin for this, but it um, seems I don't need one. So there we go. It's an iBook rechargeable battery. Anyway, put that over here somewhere. Whoops. Turn the machine the other way around. Okay, so now what we want to do is um, there's a wee screw that we need to undo here and then we just release these tabs and then kind of pull the keyboard too. Okay, so the next step to installing this wireless card is to actually lift the keyboard out and you do that by, there's two wee tabs on this, mach this keyboard. Um, one on the left, uh, between the escape and the F1 key uh, keys, and one on the right between the F12 and uh, eject keys. What you do is you pull these tabs down, hook your fingers in underneath if you can, and then gently kind of pull the keyboard out, and then just kind of slide it out from the bottom palm rest, and then there you go. And here we have the, um, I do believe this is where your airport card will go. I'm not entirely sure. So here you have it. This is the airport card. This is a wee tab that will pull it out. And, um, yeah, it just, um, it just, well, it's, a, it's a nice wee card. It actually looks a lot like a PCMCIA card. Or a card bus card, which you know I find quite interesting. Um, so if I am correct, I will plug. Yep, I plug this we wire into the into the top of the card. Okay, so I've worked out what I'm doing, and actually, I didn't notice before, but there's actually instructions on how to install the wireless card and memory underneath the keyboard. So what I need to do is I do actually need to take this metal tab, pull it up, insert the airport card underneath it, and then uh, run it um, so it is um, 
aligned with the um, card slot. <clears throat> so it is this way up. Um, just a case of um, you've got to try and ease it in. And then you'll know you've got it the right way because you'll just be able to kind of push it directly in until it slots into place. And then you take the metal bracket and just kind of press it, uh, just kind of press it down. Okay. Like that. There we go. And that is the airport card installed. Um, I'll just kind of put the tab here, I think. Now, what we need to do now is put the keyboard back in place. Um, just make sure it's all kind of aligned up with the um, with the palm rest. Pull the tabs down and put it back into place. Excellent. Now, what I can do is reattach the battery. Which seems to have some sort of a charge in it. And then we can just, yeah, tell how loose this is. Cosmetically, this machine isn't in the best of conditions, and you know, you can kind of tell it's been used, but it does still appear to work. Hopefully I've not completely wrecked it uh, by installing the airport card. Um, what I will do though is I will attach mains power and I will reattach the mouse because I'm not uh, using the mouse. There we go. There we go, and then we can start the machine up and see if the airport card works. Okay, now I appear to have not filmed the part of this video where I switched the machine on, but when I did switch the machine on, it did successfully detect the airport card, um, but I actually had to go into the network preferences and configure it have a look at the settings, make sure they were all okay, um, and then apply them so that the airport card could be used with the system. Um, and as you can see, um, the airport icon is actually showing. And um, if I zoom in, you can actually see that um, the airport icon is actually made up of some outward bound waves and those waves are actually col colored black which means that the wireless is actually connected to a network in this case my home network and that it is getting a good signal so why don't we test it what i'm going to do is i'll open up safari and we'll see if we can get a web page But I'll zoom out for this one, will I? Now, this is an old computer and is not optimised for today's internet. In fact, I would recommend you not actually use... Um, I would recommend you not actually connect older machines to the internet unless you know what you're doing because they are no longer supported um, and as such could actually, could actually um, be compromised. But apparently the watch is here. Which is very interesting, there's no picture. Um, but uh, here's a watch. <clears throat> what I can do though is 
I can actually go to Google and see if we can download 10 for Fox. And what 10 for Fox is, it's actually a uh, version of Firefox which has been designed for um, specifically for use with uh, Mac OS 10.4 Tiger. Which, um, you know, it's quite good. It, uh, I don't know how up to date it is, but um, I think it is more up to date than the official version of Firefox for 10.4 Tiger. Something else I think uh, should be made known. Apple did actually turn off. Um, Apple did actually turn off the update server for 10.4. So if I go to Apple and then go to software update, I won't even be able to get the updates that are currently available. At least I don't think I will. It'd be quite nice if I did, but I highly doubt it. Um, we're only running. I'm only running 10.4 at the moment. And uh, the latest update is 10.4.11. So I will actually need to download and install that. But uh, while I'm waiting on these, while I'm waiting on uh, Mac OS to fail to check for updates, I'll actually, um, I'll actually get this to download. There we go. It's actually now downloading. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> there are actually updates that can actually be downloaded. Would you look at that? I'll let 10 Firefox download and then I'll, I'll start downloading the updates. That's quite funny. I thought the update server was turned off, meaning you couldn't get them anymore. Hmm. I can imagine this will take a while. Because what I have to remember is, this is not a G4. No matter how much it tries to pretend to be one. And it does feel like a G4, it does. But it isn't one. In fact, the uh, I do believe the G4 iBooks did use this design. I don't know how different the chassis were internally, but um, they certainly looked a lot like the G3 versions. Right, I'll pause this and let it download. Okay, so um, 10 for Fox has downloaded successfully, and um, it's now decompressing the zip file that it downloaded. I like how uh, Safari will do that, it'll automatically decompress your uh, zip files. Um, 10 for Fox G3.app is an application. Are you sure you want to download? The application 10 for Fox G3 dot app. Yes, yes, I am. There we go. What I'm gonna do, I don't want that on the desktop. So what I will do is I'll let Safari crash. And then um I'll open the applications folder and I'll copy 10 for Fox into there. There we go. There you go. There you go. Go join all your new friends. Come on. There you go. You cannot use the application 10 Firefox G3 with this version of Mac OS 10. Do I need OS 10.4.11? Very strange. Anyway, forget that. <clears throat> Time to update. So I'll just uh, I'll drop my password in there. I'll um there we go. And then um, I'll agree to the uh, terms and conditions of the updates. And um, there we go. So, I think what I'll do is I'll end the video here. Um, I'd like to thank you all for actually uh, 
watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and like Video Sun Frontier on Facebook. The URLs will follow. But for the meantime, thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll all join me for my next one. Well, I've installed 10.4.11. There's more updates still to download. Um, I know I said um, I'd finish the video, but I just wanted to show you guys um, that uh, 10.4 Fox is now working. You do actually have to... Um, keep your Mac updated. Um, so, um, I'm actually going to remove Safari from the dock. Goodbye. Um, now, let's start up 10.4 Fox. Um, <clears throat> just, uh, just to remind you all, I was actually able to find a version specific to my G3 processor, which is rather nice. Um, and it's going to take a while to start up. Oh, there it is. Uh, do I wish to use it as a default browser? Yes, I do. Now, I do not ever plan to use this machine as a main computer. You know, this, this is going to be for music production and, um, like, messing about with old Mac software. But what I can do is... Um, I will go to a website on 104 Fox. It's taken a while to to load, but boom, there it is. The SMP website. So um, yeah, I just kind of thought I'd go here. So um, I can actually use my iBook G3 to read all ab about how the SMP are an awesome party and uh, they're going to continue to make Scotland an awesome country. So I'm going to now update, I'm going to now download and install these updates for updates and update the updates to my update. And um, I will see you all in the next video.